Hey y'all, how's everyone doing? Well, it's time for our Advent devotional today. And I'm excited about it because um, I decided to hit you up for a few days at a time. So we did um, days um, through 19. And so yesterday, which was the 20th, um, I was going to try to get to doing the devotional, but um, I went to see um, my dad in the hospital and it, between that and then making up for work time for being away from my home office, I didn't get to the devotional. So I apologize, but I'm kind of glad because today, uh, we've been looking in Luke chapter two and, um, today I'm moving back to Matthew. We kind of flip flop back and forth because, you know, the, the Christmas story is told in more than one place. And of course the Christmas story is told all over the Bible. Um, and one of the things we talked about when, in um, the last Advent day, the 19th, was about um, both the shepherds and Mary um, telling about Jesus that it was everything they had been told. What was that talking about? Well, in Jewish history, they had been told he was coming. They believed the Messiah was coming. They... Um, it's an interesting thing to talk about why didn't everybody who was looking for the Messiah believe it. So that's another whole Bible study. But anyway, so um, the shepherds had come. They'd witnessed the birth of the, of the baby Jesus, just like they'd been told. Mary's pondering it up in her heart um, as a mom would of this amazing miracle that's happened, not only for her own child, but that her own child is the Son of God, the Messiah, that she personally had been waiting for. This is just a trip. So anyway, uh, and I'm going to talk, uh, I need, I feel like I've neglected my Beth Buchanan Pure Bible channel, which is a Bible study channel, because I want to do Advent on this one. A lot of people on the beauty channels do Vlogmas, and they take out the most important word in Christmas, and that's Christ. And I understand that not everybody believes in Jesus on these, these makeup channels, beauty channels, fashion channels, but I do, and so I can't take them out of it. Um, I get where they're saying Vlogmas is where they're vlogging and they're showing their life and that's what YouTubers do. I just don't like taking Jesus out of the word Christmas. Um, I don't think it's necessarily sacrilege or anything like this. I just um, don't think it's wrong. Yes, because it, Christmas is a Christian holiday. It's about Jesus being born. It's not about Santa Claus, even though for little children to try to understand all that. I, I, I want to make sure that when I'm involved with children, my children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, six and a half, that they understand that is the story, that it is about the birth of Jesus, um, that there's a saint, Nicholas, who uh, was a real person, that we also, and that he was a giver. Um, he was, as far as I know, he's a Christian, but everything that I've studied about his, um, him as an actual person, and the way that the tradition got started, um, you know, he was, he was a good guy, and he did good things. He encouraged giving, especially to the poor, and he was not. Uh, and he gave of his wealth, and that's another thing we need to remember at Christmas. Give from, from, from a place of sacrifice. Even if you are well off, even if you're not well off, you give from a place uh, where it's more about giving and, what it, and maybe even what it costs you, or just at least if it's not like a physical or financial sacrifice, that it's something that you um, put a lot into, you know, I think we've gotten a little commercial on just getting something to get something to get the person right off the list and get done with that. And that's that's not how we should think about Christmas, or or just don't do gift giving. Do just have time to get together or something like that. But um, and then of course you know I think when Coca Cola got involved, I forgot the guy's name, Saddam Hamblum or something like that. I forgot his name, and I worked for Coke. But um, the, um, you know the artist made him a fat, round, jolly guy, much older than he actually was when he started doing it. Um, I'm not even sure about the sainting of him. I don't know if he actually was ever sainted by the monarch. I don't even know all that part. All I know is how the story started out and how it ended up is two different things, and that's often true, even with the Bible. People will start out saying this. And they end up saying that, and it's like, that's not what the Bible says. Stay with the story in the Bible. Stay with that story. So when you look at the story of Jesus throughout the Bible, two of the main places we look at are the story mentioned in Luke and the story mentioned in Matthew. But prophecies about the Messiah coming and Jesus fulfilling that are everywhere from the Old Testament to the New Testament, 
and my dogs are going ballistic. I think there's a little herd of deer out front, which is so funny because they are walking between my neighbor's uh, little Christmas, um, you know, those electronic white wire <laughs> little robot deers that are doing their little heads up and down. There's real little deer walking through it, so it's kind of unique to look at. But anyway, so on days 20 and 21, which is today, we're going to cover something that also would be covered uh, in my little guide here that I'm using in days 22 and 23. And considering this situation with my dad, uh, which is my priority right now, I love you guys, but my family is my priority, and I know that you all understand that, uh, I may or may not get to them in the next two days because of some things I've got to do for my family. So I'm going to go ahead and do four days here. We're going to do the 20, 20 through the 23rd, okay? And so let's just get uh, to looking at it. It's Matthew chapter 2, and we're going to go from verse 1 all the way to, hold on, let me see how far I want to go. Hold on one second. I'm going to go all the way to verse 11, so I'm just going to start reading right now, okay? Get your little notebook out or whatever, or put me on hold so that you can write down these scriptures. <clears throat> or either just, you know, write them down, throw me on hold, and then come back to it. So this is Matthew 2 and verse 1. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, when Herod was king, some wise men from the east, some places it says some kings, um, from the east came to Jerusalem and said, Where is he who was born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. And some people say, well, they were astrologers. They, Here's the thing. That's probably not true. The mode of navigation in that day would have certainly included, since they didn't have electronics and GPSs, and you can still do this today by positioning them the stars that don't change anywhere you are on the planet. And if you know the constellations, you can actually travel by watching them and knowing where you kind of are, like between the sun and the moon, and are you facing the north, the south, east, or the west, and then, okay, this would this time of year this constellation would be there and they did study that but not because they were astrologers maybe because they were travelers when it says wise men maybe they were just learned men um but it wasn't uncommon you know for them to travel for people to travel using those means um so they wanted to they, they're looking at the stars they'd heard about the the birth of um of jesus and they It's interesting to say they saw his star. And that's maybe another whole Bible study, but I'm going to keep going. So let's just keep going. All right, so in Matthew 2, 3 through 5, it says, Herod was troubled by this, as was the rest of Jerusalem. So he gathered the chief priests and scribes and demanded to know where the Christ may be born. And they said, and this is the, the people that he gathered up who would have studied and had knowledge, in Bethlehem, in Judea, as the prophet has written. So they, he knew that they knew. How do we find this out? They did know, and they told him. Okay, so then go to verses 8 and 9. It says, So Herod sent the wise men to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search for the child, and when you find him, send me word so that I can come and worship him too. And Satan, ever so clever. Careful. So they left, and the star went before them until it stood over the place where the child was. And I don't know necessarily, there's been so much animation, movies, and all kinds of things that have tried to portray what that looks like, you know? Um, it may just be that as they traveled and used the stars for their navigational ability to know where they were, um, that it appeared to move. It could have been, certainly, that it supernaturally moved and guided them, um, when it says his star, it can mean anything from a supernatural body in the sky that God used to guide with. Um, some people have said it was an angel. It doesn't say it was an angel, so I don't know that I would do that. And they said, well, sometimes, you know, I say angels are sometimes affiliated with the star. I'm like, N -n -n -n. it doesn't say that. I don't try to add things unless there is um, a mention of it exactly like that somewhere else in the Bible that you go, okay, those do two go together. So just careful of those kind of things. Um... And so then we're now at verses 10 and 11. It says, When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. So they're excited about the Messiah. Get that straight. These three guys, the, the wise men, kings, astrologers, whatever you want to call them, um, they're excited about the Messiah. They're on the right side. 
Um, coming into the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary. Did it say baby in a manger? No. Coming into the house, they saw the child, and they fell down and worshipped him. Okay, so this is no accident that we're very clear now that these three guys, whoever they were, were all about God. The Messiah and worshipping. Only him. They went through a lot to get to him, and they really did fall down and worship him when they found him. Opening their treasures, they gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, this is where the idea of the three kings comes from. That would be very expensive, and only a king would have those kind of gifts. That's one of the theories. The astrologer theory is because they use the stars to navigate. Okay, maybe. I think it's closer to they were very wealthy men who were very educated, so they were wise, and they used the mode of transportation that wealthy, educated men would have used. I don't think what, who they were was that important, except that God used, its, used every spectrum. He came, from, he came to the shepherds who were very poor, and then he came to very wealthy. God doesn't care about that. Don't ever think people are bad because they're wealthy. God can use their wealth, especially when they give their wealth up for his good. That doesn't mean they can't enjoy it any more than a shepherd can't enjoy a good lamb chop. So, um, or the money that he makes from um, selling the lambs for sacrifice to the temple. So just be really careful of the whole story that we don't get it out of proportion. Hello, darling. My sweetheart just walked in. And um, so I want to look at this real quickly because uh, we're going to, well, we're running out of time. The main thing that I wanted you to see is that there, it, it clearly is later. It wasn't right at the manger scene that these guys showed up because um, he's a child and he's in a house by now. Is that important? No. What's important is Jesus was born, and that's what we need to celebrate. Okay, I'll talk to you all again soon. Bye!